to Malawi now, where the Dalek uh, refugee camp is experiencing serious financial strain. Opened in 1994, it's an hour's drive outside of Lilongwe. Originally, it was a prison which housed between five and 10,000 people. The camp now hosts more than 35,000 people. More than 80% of those are from the DR Congo. Well, there are smaller groups from Burundi, Rwanda, Somalia and Ethiopia. The numbers keep growing as 500 new refugees, mostly from the DR Congo, arrive every month, putting further strain on the camp resources and the shrinking budget. Well, uh, let's go to CGTN's Angelo Coppola. He, uh, he's over there for us. It seems resources are dwindling for the growing refugees in Malawi. What's the situation on the ground? Well, Karen, it's uh, very simple. There's three key issues here. Firstly, we've got overcrowding, we've got a finance issue, and also there's a health issue. So there are a range of issues that we need to look at and need to focus on. And I'm joined here by Monique Ikoko, who's the Malawi representative for the UNHCR. Um, Monique, tell us a bit more about the actual situation in Lakeza at the moment as it stands. Okay. Zaleka camp is uh, a camp that was actually uh, started in 1994 and uh, at the moment it hosts about 35,000 refugees and asylum seekers, the majority of them over 20,000 being from the Democratic Republic of Congo, followed by the Burundians and the Rwandans. As you can see, the, when the camp was initial, initially opened, it was meant for just about five to 10,000 people, but today we have more than three four times or even ten times I should say the number of people living there so there are issues of, de of congestion and uh, we have challenges because we have a, we are underfunded uh, we have a, a funding uh, request for 17,000 or more for which we only got 6,000 and plus so you see there's a gap of almost 10.6 million what does that mean for the operation of course we have to do with what we have have it's a ch challenging uh, pr uh, situation for UNSC as a whole and this being a protracted refugee case load not so much attention is being paid to it. So you have a situation where the health facilities, education, as well as uh, living conditions and even food uh, are really beyond, below standards. You have a situation where for every uh, um, uh, 750, 000, uh, 750 refugees, you have one latrine. This is unacceptable, where the ratio is supposed to be for 25 people. Boreholes, we have just about 46 boreholes in the camp to serve 30-something thousand people. What do we expect? People are scrambling for water, they're scrambling for food, and they're scr scrambling for even health facilities. Education, at it, it's, it's also a key issue, where at the camp level, you find that not many of, you have just 30 something percent of school uh, going age children going to school. I must also say there have been some good things that have been done. We are at the crossroads of a lot of initiatives at this point in Malawi to um, improve the situation. And the government has recently embraced what we call the Comprehensive Refugee Response Framework, which will kind of put some kind of a, li a limelight into the situation, integrating refugees into the communities and the households. What we are hoping for is some kind of peaceful coexistence between the refugees and the low host population and we, re we are really grateful to the government for that. Monique, um, one of the successes I guess is we know there was, uh, there was some unrest in uh, Mozambique mm -hmm. a year to two years ago and a couple of thousand refugees were in country. What's happened with those refugees in the recent past? Oh, the Mozambican refugees have just left about a month ago back to Mozambique. It's really good news. We're happy. The repatriation took place from uh, Luane camp and uh, there were 2,500 and almost 60 of them that left back to the Tete province and we're happy that they have arrived home in safety and dignity. Now, 
I mean, now we've got a camp that's got nobody in it. Has government given you any indication what's going to happen with that camp? And, the, and what are the challenges there? No, the government is very interested. I was there with the minister to visit the camp. The government wants to ensure that the resources and the infrastructure that was put in the camp is maintained and kept in um, in good shape. And UNHCR will be supporting them for this because bear in mind that this camp which was there in the 80s and 90s when you had the Mozambican refugees, we had to come back. Little did we know that we would come back in uh, 2016 to use it again. We never know. I do not wish for everything, but we have to ensure the infrastructure is carefully is taken care of, and we are supporting the government with finances to do so at this point. The government has plans. They have indicated that they might want to do have a community college there pending anything, and we will su support them all the way. Monique, thank you very much. Great. So that's the latest news from um, Le Lungwe. And back to you in the studio, Karen. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Angelo Coppola, there for us.